Hi and welcome to another ESM training video. In this clip I'm going to scan myself. I'm going to use Trios to scan myself and hopefully this will complement what we've already looked at in the uh, using in the previous clip where we scanned stone models. So again to start with I'm presented with the the, uh, the calendar for today's I'm going to hit create new. I select the lab I'm going to work with and I enter in some information about the patient, which of course is myself. Once we're ready, once we click on that, we're ready to go. So we click on the next st stage, which is the scan stage. Now, at this point, we've got a protective tip on the scanner. We need to remove that. And we've got to place on our clean, uh, sterile scanning tip. It takes about 30 seconds for the tip to come to temperature. You will notice on the inside of the tip there's a metal strip. On this tube, or within this tube, within the scan tube, there's a heating element and its job is to heat the reflector via this metal strip. So as we slide the tip on, the metal strip makes contact, heat is conducted through the metal strip and through to the reflector. It takes about 30 seconds for that tip to heat up. So when we create the scan, when we create the order, when we click on the, the scan icon, that's the point at which the tip starts to heat up. If we created the order and went straight into scanning the patient, straight into the patient's mouth, that tip is going to start fogging up. And the result will be that the image down here at the bottom right hand side will start kind of graying out, it will start going black, it won't be crisp and clear and clean. That's indicating to us that fogging is starting to occur. We will notice after 30 seconds into our scan process that that will start fading and it will be good. But it can uh, it, it can upset the scanning process. It can lead to a little bit of frustration as well. So we just make sure we've got that 30 seconds or so for the tip to come up to temperature. Um, and it's an interesting example as well. It's an interesting situation. What can we do? Let me. Um, yeah, just what I'll do is I'll put on another tip. So that tip has been preheated, so it's ready to go. But I'm just going to jump in here straight away. I'm going to start scanning. you can see that no image was appearing. That you can, I can feel now that the temperature is starting to, to increase. I can see some misting occurring on the, on the screen, but now I can see it's starting to fade away. It's kind of like being in a car and you turn on the, the window heater. And initially it's all fogged up, and then you can see that mist starting to disappear. If I start scanning again, Now you see we get a nice, clear, crisp, sharp image there, and the software starts scanning straight away. So it's all good. So that's another clean tip. I'm going to use that for the scan process. This obviously was just there to show what was what would happen when we've got some fogging. So rather than using this as our starting point for the scan, I'm just going to clear it. I'm going to hit clear. Do I want to delete it? Yes, I do. I want to go back to the start. As a rule of thumb, we do like to consider that if the if we get off to a bad start when we're scanning, you know, we're best to just abandon that part of the scan. We just hit clear and start again. If we get a good start, well then it's going to be much easier easier for us to maintain that as we continue to the, the the full scan. Okay, so this is quite exciting, a little bit nerve wracking, but hey, it's what we do. So I'm going to scan the lower arch. I'm going to start at the back. On my left hand side, I'm going to sweep forward. I'm going to capture the occlusal surface. I'm going to relieve my lip. I'm going to pull my lip. I'm going to pull my lip away uh, in order to make sure that there's at least um, less soft tissue in the way, to, uh, which will obviously interfere with the scanning process. My tongue. What do I do with my tongue? What do we tell our patients to do with their tongue? Relax. Obviously, that's more easier said than done. In fact, we can encourage the patient to move their tongue to the opposite side of the mouth. So as you're scanning the left hand side, 
ask them to move the, the, their tongue to the right hand side. Do we need the patient to be mouth wide open, which of course is a nervous reaction. It's a reaction every patient does as soon as they sit in, the patient, in, a, in a clinician's chair, uh, wide open. We don't need that. We just need to make sure we have enough room for the, the scan tip to go inside the scanner and we can see and we can make adjustments. If the mouth is wide open, everything tenses up. The cheeks tense up, the lip tense up, tenses up, and the tongue will tense up as well, which makes it harder to maneuver the tip inside the scanner. So I'll have the patient open their mouth, of course, but to a relaxed state rather than a, an overstretched um, state. Um, a point I made in a, in a previous clip is that I like to use my finger as a guide. So as I'm holding, as I'm holding my lip out of the way, I will use the, the, the finger that's there as a guide to, um, to support the scan tip. So let's go. I'm going to stop and start. This might be a great scan. It might be a terrible scan. I want, to, want you to see what, how it works, what goes right, what works well, what doesn't work so well. We'll stop and we'll start. We will get a good result on screen by the end of it, and that's of course the important thing. And if I can, if you can learn from this, if I can highlight things to do, things not to do, well then of course it's going to be a great learning experience. So let's go. So again, one quick firm push to the to the button. It's best that we we start in the mouth rather than starting to scan and then moving into the mouth. If we start to scan and move into the mouth, we're going to capture lip, we're going to capture some anterior teeth, and we get off to a bad start. So move to our starting position, press start, and, and away we go. Okay, so I'm gonna stop myself right there. What have we got? Let's see where we're at. Okay, so we've got some lip, you know, so I'm practice as what you preach as they say, and perhaps here I'm not so not pre preaching what I'm, what I'm practicing. I'm not practicing what I'm preaching. What have I done? I've opened my mouth nice and wide, really tight, I've got tight lips. Uh, why is that? I wanted you to be able to see what was going on as much as possible. So next time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just delete out this section of lip and I'm going to rescan. You can see what we did capture. We captured really well. We got a little bit of tongue there. Not a problem. The software doesn't mind that. And the lip was, was getting in the way there. So if I wish, I can continue scanning. Not a problem. I could clear. We don't need to. We've done some work. We've captured some good information. In this case, I'm going to trim. So I select the trim button and I'm just going to trim away this piece part of the lip. Now before we I do so, we should actually consider on this particular case that the lip is attached to some labial detail, which is not attached to anything. So like, like I pointed out previously, that's actually considered to be a patch. Now if I hit all patches, the software gets rid of all of that detail, which is probably a good thing for us to do and work from that point. What we do need to consider is if I didn't capture so much anatomical detail and in fact the lip, there was more lip than there was teeth, we've got two patches. One is the patch we want to keep, the other patch is the patch we don't want to keep, but the software doesn't give us an option to choose. It always assumes the smaller patch is the patch we want to get rid of. So we could get a situation where it would in fact delete the teeth instead of the um, instead of the the, uh, the lip. We've got the magical undo button just down here. We can click undo. If it's a case that the software does delete out detail that we didn't want it to delete, well then we can hit undo and we're good. We can redo what we've just undone or we can click on all patches again. I hit done and now I'm ready to go again. The software just came up briefly there, came up with a message updating preview. When it's updating the preview, this is the preview, when it's updating the preview we can't scan. And that 
is something you, you, you got to consider because if we try to scan we push the button we try to scan it doesn't start scanning what's going on it can be lead to a little bit of frustration so if it's updating the preview we just got to let it update you can see it took about three or four seconds no big deal we let it update the preview and, and we can continue scanning so at this point my decision is I'm gonna start from around about here and pull forward I could try to start here and move forward but I don't think it would be such a good idea number one because if we look at that image that section of the image and that section and that section they're very very similar so if we start scanning there the software may struggle in, in, in terms of overlaying the detail the new scanned data on top of, of what's there already whereas these two premolars are even back here you know there's no competition there's no there's no question there's no contention there. there's a lot there's a significant difference in those geometries or in those anatomies it's easier for the software to to work with that so let's go again Okay, so again we struggled a little bit because of that lip getting in the way. And I'm doing this completely blind. I'm looking at the webcam for your benefit. This image is in the background. I can see a small representation of that on my screen over here, but it's not as good as, as looking at that there. So I am kind of flying blind, but you can see even when you fly blind, it's still possible to create a really good scan. So I'm gonna continue from where I was. Another consideration, which you need to mention, is saliva. The scanner can scan saliva, but there's no contesting it, there's no disputing it. Saliva does cause issue. A little suction like that, that's all we need. We don't need to have suction tubes in there removing saliva. I'm going to stop there. Like I pointed out when we were scanning the stone models, we could just turn the scanner around and push forward in, push, push from the front, push backwards. Or alternatively, I'm going to start from here. I'm going to start from the back, so I click on the screen. At that point, the model reorientates itself. A black box appears around that tooth. This, that's the software saying to us, yes, I know we're going to scan from, from this position. So let's go. it done. We can review the case, make sure we're happy with everything. Yes, there's some details missing there, so let's go back in and, and rescan it. So I'm going back to lower right side, there's some lingual detail there I want to recapture.
notice that I rolled the, the scanner as I was in that position just to make sure we can capture it, the detail. And again on that canine, I'm gonna go there again. And it's done. So you can see that it's very easy to revisit a particular position and and rescan that area. So the time we have the top scan time there, two minutes fifty-eight seconds just under three minutes. You know, we can do that in a minute and a half, in two minutes, um, with a bit, bit more practice. And obviously I was stopping and starting there to, uh, to highlight a few points. I am going to trim away that bit of excess material. And the reason being is because even though it's soft tissue, if we were to optimize the occlusion, the software would see that as being part of the case and it would base its occlusion. It would consider that as part of the um, occlusion. So I trim away the material, click on all patches, just down here, and that, and that goes. And I hit down. Now I'm going to scan the upper arch. I can use the same tip, it's not a problem. Take the tip off, turn it around through, through 180 degrees, and we'll go again. And you will notice that the tips are quite tight. Um, that's inherent because we got that metal strip in there providing the conductive path for the heat to pass through the element to the to the tip to the reflector you know, that that metal strip is uh, is is curved so it's pushing up it's pushing pressure onto that tube onto that black tube so as a result of that there will be um it will be a, a tighter fit habit good practice there's a fine line I'm going to start from the left hand side again on my upper arch. It's what I tend to do. The software does orientate things, it, it, it does understand the orientation of an upper and lower arch anyway, but I tend to start from the same side each time. So again, let's go. We've clicked on upper arch, software is just waiting for us to push the button. So let's go. I just want to stop there, it's a valid point. What happened was I just moved forward a little bit faster than the scanner could, could keep up with me. I continued moving forward and then I realized actually no, this, the clicking noise had stopped, the window in the center of the screen went red. So that's when I decided to push back. Hang on it, I just wanted to stop just to, to point that point out. So I'm gonna go back, the last successful area was on that, on that wisdom tooth. The last successful capture was on that wisdom tooth. So I wanna go back from, and start from there. Alternatively, if I wanted to restart from a different tooth, of course, I can do that as well. it's worth pointing out there obviously the things went a little bit slower around that incisor yeah and 
and this is a really good illustration and it's what I was expecting when I went across my initial scan when I went across my initial scan what happened I captured occlusal surface detail all the way around but I didn't capture so much labial detail on these incisors so what's now starting to happen and it's very it's this is a textbook error and I'm glad that it happened to me and I was cognizant of it at this when I was at the front and I chose to to leave it as it was just to highlight this particular point what was obvious to us well it seemed like we were doing what we should be doing it seemed like we were we were scanning uh, in uh, according to protocol it seemed like that we were the the scanner was looking at the same image that was being presented on screen but the software wasn't capturing it it wasn't recording it we weren't getting the clicking noise we were getting a red square instead of a green square why was that what's starting to happen you can just about see it here we're starting to get separation so what's happened is we've carried out a scan all the way around the arch and when we came back again because we weren't so good on this occlusal this initial scan here there was a weakness there was an error across the whole arch if you if you will if you imagine that when we started to come when we started to come around here again and the software has now got new data and it's trying to it's stitching it together and trying to overlay it on the original data you can see this kind of little fissure this little crack line this little error starting to creep in and the more we go the greater it gets so much so that we're seeing a separation nearly like um, a, an additional skin on the on the surface of the tooth this is great I'm glad that we got to present this because at this point we need to abandon this scan the upper arch scan if we try to continue yes we can do so but realistically we're going to cause ourselves and the patient a lot more um, a grief than, a, than is actually actually necessary. This is inherent in all intraoral scanning processes by the way as well. So it's a matter of sticking with protocol, sticking with best practice as has been highlighted. So as much as I don't like to do it, I've got to hit, hit the clear button. Are you sure you want to clear the upper jaw? Yes I am. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to do it again. It's worth pointing out. So what happened there? So it was everything was looking good, isn't it? Okay, so we're we're doing a great scan there. Everything's going really well. It's going the way it should do. But what 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 was obvious there was that it started to things started to slow down here again around about that uh, that particular region. Look at how everything's going together around the anterior. It's fantastic. It's looking really really neat, nice and clean, no issues. I pushed the wand up into my sulcus. 
I was I was scanning soft tissue. I wasn't scanning teeth. As soon as I came, to, and that's why we got that little pause. That's why we got that delay. As soon as I came down back onto the tooth detail, things started working out again. Okay. What's an interesting thing is, under tools, bottom right hand side, under tools, we can play back a scan. I hit playback, and that's going to allow us to review the whole scan. If I hit play, we can walk through the scan. So it's just like any video player. You know, we can click and drag this bar here, and we can watch it fast forward. Okay, so you can see I'm around the incisors, around the premolar by cuspids, and then I just went a little bit too deep. And then it worked out okay. So I can close that. And we're ready to go again. Like I pointed out earlier on, I, my preference is to start on an occlusal surface on a molar and, and move forward. So let's do that. So I just clicked on that tooth, that's where I'm going to start from. Couple of things here worth pointing out as well. When we're scanning, we always want the scan tip to be square onto the tooth. So there's my molar. There's the scanner. So we've we've scanned uh, occlusally. We came around. We scanned buccally, and now we're scanning palately. Now, because of the shape of the arch, because we've got anterior teeth, this software does not allow, or sorry, the, the nature, physics, does not allow us to have the scanner in this orientation. So sometimes what some people, we, we notice that some people do, they don't go down that low, they kind of come here, and they're trying to scan detail up here from a very, very tight angle. So we can't achieve this, no, but we can achieve this. So tip the scanner, dip the scanner, dip it down, rewind this clip and see what I was doing. We dip the scanner down in order to allow the scan tip to get in there, to get into that palatal detail. What was also obvious as well, and it's gone, we saw that some of my cheek started to appear up here. But the software, as I may have pointed out in the previous clip, that the software is clever enough. It knows that if it scans detail that's there one time and it's not there another time, it's not supposed to be there. It's mobile, it's soft tissue, so it automatically deletes it. But the result of me scanning, the, the reason I scanned some of my cheek whilst trying to scan the, the palate uh, or the palatal surface of the teeth was because the tip was too high in this, in this orientation. So we would try and keep the tip down, the top of the, keep the top of the tip aligned with the, uh, the, 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 the cusps, the, the palatal cusps, or perhaps even a little bit lower. We don't want it to be too high, otherwise we're going to scan cheek. If we do, we do. It's not the end of the world, but we want to make it easier on the software. Um, so try, let's just try and avoid the, the cheek in the first place. Okay, so we're capturing some, um, some of the palate there. I'm going to continue on from where I was, and we'll get through this in no time.
Okay, there we go. So, what was different about this scan? Well, we obviously had palette to capture, and we captured that. What did I do when I was capturing the palette? I captured my palatal surface on the teeth first, and then you'll notice that I went a little bit deeper into the palate and then a little bit deeper again. I went at a reasonably slow pace. It's important that we do that, particularly around the palate. What have we got? We got the rugae, which are nice, challenging ge geometrical surfaces, but at the soft palate towards the back, it's very, very smooth. If we try to move too fast, because of the minimal variations in the surface, the software has a really tough job aligning each of those adjacent subscans. So therefore it's important we go nice and slow and give the software an opportunity to, to catch up. And one final thing that we noticed there was this the noise coming from the scanner changed. Well the noise coming from the software changed. We're going from our clickety click noise to a more aggressive, or like a deep bass drum beat. That's the software telling us we've scanned too many images. I've overdone this one. I've spent three minutes on it. Which, which isn't too bad, but I went at such a slow pace just to highlight everything as I was going around. I was capturing more and more da data and the file is becoming bigger. It's not the end of the world, but the recommendation is to keep the scan within a thousand um, images. I'm gonna trim away using the trim button and my one millimeter brush. I'm gonna trim away some of this detail. click on all patches and the last thing I need to do is just a little bit of detail there that I, I want to catch this software will close that off and you may have noticed a moment ago that it did but perhaps this is for an acrylic base appliance perhaps and there we go again it's closed it off perhaps it's going to be for um, a retainer a push down retainer sorry a, a vacuum form retainer or, or a blow down retainer I just want to go back in there and recapture a bit of that data. So I click on that tooth, I'm going to start from that orientation and I'm just going to get the scanner to a position where it can see that, that undercut. And there we go, it's done. And now we're ready to do the occlusal scan. Again, little indication as to what way we should do it. There's no right and wrong to this, but I do feel I get better results when I put the tip back into the orientation as if we're, we're gonna scan the lower model. It's asking us to scan the, the right-hand side first, and then we're gonna stop, and then we can just jump straight in and scan the left-hand side. So. If I bite, if I get my uh, occlusion into the ideal occlusion, like so, and then try to scan, well, I gotta get that scanner into this very tight space. If that's what we need to do, that's what we need to do. And we can do so with it, whether it's a cheek retractor or, or a mirror or a little finger, to relieve the cheek away. But if the bite is nice and stable and repeatable, it's best and more comfortable than everybody for the patient to open their mouth, put the scanner in place, push it to the side, and then bite like what I'm going to do just now. Again, three or four units, three or four seconds. That's all we need. And then we do the same on the opposite side. If for whatever reason we cannot maintain the the bite, we can only get it. We can't get it repeatable, on, and and the software won't allow us, or we cannot we cannot scan the same bite twice on right hand side and left hand side. It is possible just to do one scan. We can just do the bite scan on the right hand side and leave it at that. If that if we're happy with that, that's great. And if not, the occlusion can be adjusted using virtual articulators using various functions within the ortho analyzer software. So what we get on screen now 
whilst it is a good representation of what, an, a, a very accurate representation of what's going on in the patient's mouth right now, we do have tools in other software to, um, to correct that. And there we go. Here's our 3D models, no powder coating, no spraying, no suction. We can capture hard tissue, we can capture soft tissue, and we've got full control and full flexibility on what we do. And we go back to send, we hit send, click on send, and the data is pushed to wherever we want it to go to. So if it's our orthodontic lab or if it's our internal database, we can, we can do so. That's an interesting point. That raises another point. What if we want to send it to both? We can send it to our internal database first and from there push it out to the lab. Or alternatively, we could go back to our order, our order form, and we hit copy. We select a standard copy, and the software now creates a copy of that case, including everything. It's an exact replica, and then we can go in and change the lab. The lab from practice lab to outside lab. Click OK, and then we just need to go to the end and hit resend. So we've got one set of information going to our internal database, and the other set of information going to an outside lab. You might even want to send copy it again and send it to another lab, particularly if you're trying out new labs or whatever whatever test you might want to be doing on the on the system. So um, we're all done now. Typical um, uh, uh, cross-infection control uh, and measures should be put in place. We've got a tip. It's been in my mouth. I'm sure nobody else wants to have it in their mouth. So this needs to be isolated and, and sterilized. If we're going to get, if we're going to scan another patient right now, we'll put a new tip onto the scanner. Or alternatively, we will. Well, first of all, we'll wipe down everything. That's the scanner can be wiped down with all typical um, disinfecting um, products, popular products we use in, in a clinic. And then, of course, we'll place the the protective tip on. Okay, I'll remove my gloves, and then we're all set ready for the next patient. So I hope this clip has been useful to you. Um, it's a bit of practice. So we like to scan stone models. If we can scan ourselves, my belief is we can scan anybody. Because when we're scanning ourselves, we don't know, we can't see where the scanner is. We're relying on the controls. Um, we're relying on what the software is telling us. Yes, you can feel it in your mouth. And it's really important for us to get used to that sensation. And kind of figure out exactly what you can and cannot do within the uh, w when the scanner is in the mouth. Um, you can only learn that by scanning yourself. So as I say, I hope it's been useful. As always, feel free to give us a call at any time. Hope this clip was good. And uh, yeah, you know where we are. Take care.